this talk that we're gonna that I'm gonna do real quick. Um, this is about templating in PHP using Twig. Um, part of the reason why I wanted to give the talk is that we started to use Twig in our application at work, and I really enjoy it, and I think it's pretty neat, and I wanted to learn more about it, which is another good reason to give talks because it really makes you learn about your material. So let's meet Twig. Uh, Twig is a templating engine that comes to us from Sensio Labs. They're the people who give us the Symphony framework, um, which, if you're not familiar, is a very popular full-stack um, framework in PHP. They also give us Silex, the micro framework, if you don't need all of a full-fledged framework, but you want some of the features. Um, they have the very popular SMTP email library, Swift Mailer. And then they've also been putting out Sysmo. It's a testing server kind of similar to like Travis or Jenkins. Uh, to, if you want to include Twig in one of your talk, one of your uh, applications, you would install it with Composer. Uh, if you're not familiar with Composer, it's a this is like the this is the direction that PHP is going. It's um, how you can install third-party like libraries or um, resources into your application easily. Um, there's a link there to getcomposer.org where you can install the application on your machine so that you can then use Composer to manage your dependencies. So from the command line, uh, assume that you have the Composer uh, executable in your path as just Composer. You can just say Composer require twig slash twig. And it'll ask you a version you want, and then it's like, okay, great. Now you've got, uh, you'll have a directory called vendor, and then under vendor you'll have um, the third-party libraries like Twig. So let's get started setting this up. So in your application, in the PHP part of it, um, all you have to do, and this is just part of Composer, you would just require or include the path to vendor autoload.php. And that sets up all the autoloading so that you can then use um, all of the, you, so you can then use the things that uh, you have set up through Composer. So then on the next line here, I just create, uh, with Twig, the way it works is you, you need to create this Twig environment, and you need to tell it how to find the Twig templates. Maybe I could be, let me just do this here. Um, but here I'm using the file system loader by giving it a path to where I keep my views, where I keep my HTML templates. Um, and then I create Twig by saying, okay, Twig, new environment, and I pass it the loader. Um, now, to actually start using it to like render some kind of HTML through Twig, you can say Twig render, and then like the name of the file. And now it knows based on that file system order where it can find that it's under views index.html.twig. Uh, you could do like echo Twig render, or like render will just return the contents of the string, or you can just go ahead and print it directly with Twig display. It's like a convenience factor. So now, uh, I referenced on the previous slide index.html.twig, and here's, an, here's what it is in that file. This is just static HTML. So there's nothing special in here. So we haven't really started templating yet. Um, so let's start templating. Um, in Twig, uh, by default, there's two um, delimiters that you're going to use for issuing like Twig statements, like executing Twig code. Um, there's like curly brace percents or just curly brace curly brace. The first curly brace percent is going to like execute some kind of statement, and then the latter will print the result of an expression. So here's an example. In the body of my Twig template, um, the first thing I do is I'm setting the variable, the variable engine, I'm putting it equal to Twig. So that's in the curly brace percent sign. So this is this doesn't print anything. This is just me executing some code. Um, and then in the second line, I'm saying, okay, hello, and then print the, re the result of engine. So it's like, hello, Twig. Now, so far, this isn't very useful. I don't think I've like, convinced anybody because I basically just, I just hard-coded this all into my HTML. It doesn't do, very, do a lot of good. More likely, what you would do uh, server-side, when, when you're actually going to render the, like when you call Twig and tell it to render the, uh, the template, you can pass in a second parameter, an array, 
and the, these will become variables inside your template. So here I have an array engine, and it is equal to some code. And some code is like some function, something part of my business logic that's going to return, like maybe the string twig, for example. Um, now this is kind of compact. I'm using the PHP 5.4 shorthand array style. That's why there's the, the square brackets instead of actually having the word array. So like here's another example. Um, in the first section, this is in the PHP code. I'm going to talk to my ORM, talk to my database, how, whatever my storage layer is. I have some function, find all users. It's going to return me back a list of users for my application. And then when I render my template, I pass in users as a variable. I pass by that second parameter to render. Now in my template, I've got a loop where I'm using Twig. I'm using Twig code to say, OK, if we're user in users, we're going to have a list item that's going to have user.name is at user.location. So what this is actually going to print out, this is, this is going to say, like, OK, so UL, so we've got this unordered list. And then the first list item is going to say, Seth is at the labor party. Another list item says Jacob is at the labor party. Then is at the labor party. You know. um, it's a, um, and there's other control structures. There's like you can do like if and um, other ways to loop. Now in the twig, when we say like user dot name, um, this is what I think is the preferred syntax way you can access something on that variable. What this is actually going to try, like pretty much in this order, um, if user is an array, it's going to look for an element called name. If it's an object, it's going to look for a public property called name. If you can't find that, it's going to look for a method called name. If you can't find that, it'll look for a method called get name. And then it'll look for is name. And if none of that is true. I mean, if user is just, if, if none of that comes out true, then they would just return null. So, like, you might see a lot when you have, like, entity objects like user, and they might have a property called name, and maybe you have getters and setters like get name and set name for every one of your things. In your template, it's really easy. It's like user.name, and it's like, okay, you need get name. Um, another thing that's nice in Twig, they have what they call filters. Um, they use this type syntax. So given that user.name is Jacob, right? So when I'm going to, everything inside these curly braces here is uh, is this expression that I'm going to evaluate. Uh, so first we say user.name, so that would be like Jacob. And then that gets piped through a filter called upper, which is going to uppercase everything. And then it gets piped through a filter called reverse, which reverses everything around. So now it's like, hello, Bokosh. Like, right in your face. Um, there are several built-in filters that Twig comes with. Um, for a lot of common things that you're gonna, that you might want to do inside one of your one of these views, one of these rendered files, uh, there's some like like join, for example, um, would be kind of like implode, maybe in PHP where you've got like an array of a collection of items and you want to maybe put them together as just like a single string separated with commas or something, or there's like strip tags um, to like run it through some sanitation process to remove HTML tags from the content or Title with like title case something, kind of like uppercase words. Yeah, um, yeah. So like join for example, if I had an array, I had like a collection of users, and I wanted to print a single string that had like all their names, right? Then I could do like users type the join and then paren quote string, and so then that's saying like we're gonna delete these. Um, where Twig gets really cool is that you can define your own filters. So there was like, I showed you the list of built-in fil filters, but you can make your own. So at work, we have an application where um, I need to print off a PDF, and so I've got like a list of jobs. These are like jobs that an employee might work on, and each job has a code associated with it, but I need to render that code in a barcode format so they can scan it with a barcode gun when the employee is clocking in and clocking out. Um, so here I'm creating a filter that we're going to call barcode 128. This is, um, and so I create this filter called barcode 128, and it accepts one parameter, which would be a string, or this is like what's going to be like piped in or filtered in. Um, 
So the first part doesn't, I wouldn't pay too much attention. This is just me defining a path to a file like that's not going to exist. And then uh, image PNG, that's that's from PHP's the GD library for like creating images on the fly based on the data. Um, but then the, I'm going to I'm going to call my function timeips barcode 128, which knows how to take a string like maybe 1,000 like the number, and it converts back into data that's appropriate to feed into image PNG. And what it'll do is at path it's going to create a PNG of a barcode, right? Um, now what I'm going to do is like I use file get contents to just read the raw like bytes of that image on, off the disk. Uh, I unlink it because I don't want to leave it lying around after me. And then what my filter is actually going to return is this image tag, and it's got source data, and I'm using the data URIs. Where if you're not familiar with those, what you can do is you can you can like take the contents of an image, the actual the bytes of them, base64 encode them, and you can just render it as like image source data image PNG base64, and then a giant string of the image contents, right? So, and then the last line there where I say uh, twig add filter, that's what registers my filter as being available for users. Wait, no, I'll connect. So like in the in my example, I've got this list of jobs. So I'm going to loop over them with for job in jobs, and for each one I'm going to we're going to print out the job's name, and then I'm going to take the job's code, type it to barcode 128, and then we and then I type it to raw, which says that it's safe and it's going to actually render that HTML as it is. And so then the final output I'm going to have DT and then like a job name like accounting. And then under the DV, I would have an image tag that would have like the image contents in it. So the final output, like I might take this and type it through like DOM PDF or something. And so then I have a PDF. This is like accounting, and there's a barcode. Marketing, and there's a barcode. Sales, and there's a barcode. And the employees can scan each one. Uh, now I mentioned that raw tag um, because that brings up the idea of escaping uh, twig can either automatically escape variable output for you, or you can choose to disable the automatic escaping and do it by hand. Uh, so like in the previous example, we go back. what barcode 128 is going to return is actually the string, you know, bracket image source equals data image PNG. Blah, blah. So like here, inside the DD tag is going to be an image tag. If I didn't pipe it through raw there at the end, um, Twig might try to escape it. And so instead of actually having a picture of a barcode in my final output, I'm going to have the text image source equals data p image PNG, right? Um, so with escaping, um, there's a couple different kind of ideas. In the previous example, I had automatic escaping turned on. So I had to, when you filter it through raw at the end, that tells that tells Twig that it's safe. Like I know that this is going to return HTML, and that's okay, go ahead and render it. Um, but if I didn't have automatic escaping turned on, you could pipe suspect variables through, like there's a filter called escape, or um, they have there's also a built-in one that's a shorthand for which is E to escape it. Um, and by default, it uses what the um, by default it's uh, had heard uh, with the. Okay. By default, it uses the HTML um, escaping strategy for what can be escaped and what couldn't for for it to be rendered appropriately. Um, the you can also pass it an optional print uh, parameter like JS or HTML attribute or XML or JSON that uh, did or didn't escape somewhere else. All right. Um, you can also create. Uh, in Twig, you can make macros that would make things easier for you. Uh, so in the first example, this is taken pretty much straight from the Twig doc site. The, we're making a macro called input that accepts a label, a name, and then value and type would be, ID, would, um, you could pass it in, but if you don't, there we have default parameters. And so then what it's going to do is it's going to print out a label tag and an input tag 
and then in your act, so this would be like in forms on HTML that twig, and then in your actual um, view that you're going to render, you would say like import forms HTML twig as forms, and then when you want to call this macro, you would say forms input, and then I guess here in this one I need two parameters, one for the label and one for the name. Um, but you would, but then you could have, you would just pass those things in, and then it would put that stuff back. Uh, there's also a lot of built-in functions. Um, these are these, are, these come with uh, these are they're similar to macros, um, but they're uh, there's things like range, like if you just needed an, a quick array that went from like two to hundred or something. Um, and a lot of these are based on just PHP functions because what happens is that Twig gets compiled down into PHP and then um, like clean up. You can also, and this is where it's really convenient, um, you can create layouts and then have child templates extend them. So uh, this layout is pretty much just straight what I took off of Twig's doc page. Um, but here, this is like base.html.twig, and you define these blocks, like at the top where it says block head and then it says end block. So, okay, so here we have a block called head. And then Inside, you see there's one that says like block title in block, and then there's like block for content, and then like a block for the footer. In like a child template, or like in a template that would represent a specific page, you would um, you would say at the top this extends, um, and I probably should say base.html.twig, and then you can override particular blocks. So like on the previous one. The block for title was just blank, right? So on this one here, it just defines the block for title as just being the word index. So the way this is actually going to render, like inside the title tag, it'll say index hyphen my web page. Um, for the content block, here I'm setting the content as like maybe an H1 tag and some more of some whatever. Um, and then in the footer, See, notice I'm calling this function parent. So what that's going to do is that's going to take everything that's already defined in my parent, in the parent template within this block, and it's going to include that. And then, and then like that, that comment there about adding my own script tag, that would come in afterwards. Uh, now you might have noticed the head, like we have a block here called head. I never reference it in the child block. So it just gets included like this. It's, these are like the defaults. Another pretty neat feature of Twig is its uh, white space control. There's a couple of different ways you can do this, um, but an easy one is that if you start with spaceless and end with in spaceless, you can format this everything, all the HTML in between those, and it doesn't really matter. So like here, like my UL, it's indented in, and then list items indented in another time, and then the link, the anchor tag is on its own line and indented in again. When this is actually rendered, it's going to render like it shows in the bottom example, where it's just like everything is, all the spaces are removed between the tags. The space between like A and href isn't removed, and between my first and last name, that's not removed. But all the space between tags is. So if you're worried about, you know, Sending white space because it's it's a concern when you're trying to like micro optimize. Um, then it's really nice. You can have you don't have to work in this horrible ugly to read template where everything's all crammed together. You just work in whatever is easy to work in, and then when it gets rendered, it'll get rendered out spaceless. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, that the template that these Twig templates get compiled into PHP, and then your variables are passed through that. Um, by default, caching is disabled, but you can enable caching by, when you create your Twig environment, you pass in an array of options. So like if you say cache equals, and then like path to a location where it can write these templated, write the comp compiled templates. Um, again, speed up performance so it doesn't have to recompile the template on every request. Now, in all my examples, I use HTML, but Twig doesn't care if you're writing HTML or not. You could use Twig to make XML or JSON or 
anything. So, like, in this example, I have some little XML document called roster. So it's a list of users, you know. Um, anything, anything that you might want to template or output with your PHP application, you could use Twig to do that template. And then, yeah, um, all those logos came from Sensio Lab, except for the composer one. Um, Twig.sensiolab.org is a great website. Uh, it has all this documentation. That's where I got all of my material for this. But now you guys don't have to spend as much time reading it, because I've basically primed you for it. So that's, uh, yeah, does anybody, have any, anybody want to ask me questions now, maybe later, about Twig? If you, if you don't cache uh, <coughs> Twig code, um, is there an efficiency drawback? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if you don't have caching enabled, then every time it goes to render, it has to go through the process of compiling your Twig template into a PHP template, like a simple but minimized template. But it still has to do that every time. Um, in production, you would want to make sure those are ca those are those are cached, so you only have to do that once. What's the store for the duration of the session? Or? It's just stored indefinitely. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah. So okay. it actually caches them to disk. Like it'll cache the compiled templates. So if you need to, mm -hmm. so if you're going to make changes, then you need to make sure you clear the cache. I'll leave all those compiled templates out. Uh, you also, I noticed yeah. here finally the index.html.fig. Right. And the final serve to the browser, does it look like HTML or does it look like HTTP? Yeah, so um, the file name on the quick template um, is, I only have it like that kind of out of convention. But it doesn't actually, it could be anything. Um, because here, so like in this code here, this might be in like index.php. And so it's going to echo the render content of whatever you call the name of your of the, of the file. Um, so like in your browser, it would still just be like index.php or ubar.php or whatever. So what's the point of the HTML there? Um, having organization, really. Because um, like I was saying, like you can use Twig to, temp to template things other than just XML. than just HTML. So in my this is kind of like my preference that I would have um, if I had more than one kind of template, like maybe I have well like let's say for example you want to use Twig to generate email messages. Um, like the, you're gonna use like that Swift mailer and you're gonna mail somebody uh, you know, maybe you want to send like an HTML version and a text version, so you can make uh, Twig templates for both of those things. And I, and I probably would call it like welcome email .html .twig and welcome email .text.twig. And even the .twig isn't really a requirement. Um, that's just convenient so that like my editor knows that it's Twig and knows to set the file type and syntax appropriately. Good question. Anybody else? All right, well, thank you for listening to the rant.